Remote controls on objects like televisions work by sending infrared signals from a handset to a receiver on the device you want to actually operate. So how do they work? What can interfere with them working? The infrared part of the light spectrum is invisible to the human eye. So even though you may not be able to see it, when you depress a key on the remote control, it sends a series of pulses of infrared light to the bulb, which is normally a light emitting diode on the end of the remote control. Each key on the handset represents a different coded set of pulses, so that the TV or other machine knows which button has been pressed by the particular pattern of pulses that are being transmitted from the handset. Since there are a large number of manufacturers making televisions and other devices that are operated by remote control, and they each have their own codes of pulses or protocols which cause the machine to operate. There's no infrared standard for remote controls, though a single manufacturer may use the same protocol for all of their devices. This means that you normally need a specific remote control for a specific piece of equipment, or one from the same manufacturer. Since the remote controls are basically using light to transmit the information, you normally need to be pointing the remote control at the machine with nothing blocking the line of sight. However, a reflective surface like a mirror can enable you to operate a device from around a corner. The other issue tends to be with the receiver on the target machine. It has a limited angle from which it will actually be able to recognise the signal from the remote control. Now the machines do tend to vary, but when you're off to one side by more than a 45 degree angle, the receiver struggles to respond to the signal from the remote control. Since a series of pulses of infrared light are being used to activate the machine, it's almost impossible to have any natural interference with remote control. And since an LED light uses very little power, then the batteries for remote control tend to last a substantial amount of time. The only issue in regard to power under remote control is that of the standby mode of the machine. In order for a remote control to activate a device, the receiver on the gadget must constantly be on the lookout for a signal, so it must constantly be on even if an, in a low power mode, like standby, ready to activate when it receives an infrared signal.